Doxycycline is an antibiotic and it's within the class of tetracycline antibiotics. Some other examples of tetracycline antibiotics are limacycline and oxytetracycline. Now, in the UK, in hospital medicine, doxycycline is by far the most used of the tetracyclines. I have never prescribed limacycline or oxytetracycline in hospital, or at least I've never initiated either of these tetracyclines. Patients come in on these where they're taking them long term for skin conditions, which we'll talk about later, but I've never initiated those. Those have been initiated by their GP in the community whereas doxycycline is an antibiotic that we actually use in hospital to treat life-threatening infections. So the main thing that we use doxycycline to treat in hospitals is bacterial lower respiratory tract infections and bacterial pneumonia. So I've got here a small picture of the lungs and the airways to just explain the difference between a lower respiratory tract infection and pneumonia. So a lower respiratory tract infection, or LRTI for short, that is where you have an infection within the airways within the lungs, so the pipes, whereas pneumonia is when you actually have an infection within the lung tissue itself. The main type of bacteria that causes infections of these lower portions of the respiratory tract is a bacterial species called Streptococcus pneumoniae. Now this is not something that you catch. This is a type of bacteria that is present in all of us. It lives in the back of our throat and it causes no issues there. So it colonizes the surface of our throat. So it's a commensal. It lives there perfectly peacefully. Now, that means that when we take a deep breath in, all of us are breathing in small quantities of this bacterium all the time. Now, if you've got a good, strong immune system, your immune system is capable of destroying those bacteria that manage to get into uh, the lower airways or indeed the actual alveolar tissue itself. However, in someone who is elderly and frail, if they, their body is currently very stressed already, let's say maybe they've just had a fall and injured themselves very badly and they're stuck in bed because of the pain following their fall, then their body is physiologically stressed already. That will weaken then their immune capabilities and they might then not be capable of defending themselves against these small quantities of this bacteria that they're breathing in all the time. And that bacteria might then be able to actually colonize these lower portions of the respiratory tract and set up a bacterial lower respiratory tract infection or indeed bacterial pneumonia. Another example of how bacteria can infect this place is through respiratory viruses leading the way. So there are a huge number of respiratory viruses. The coronavirus that is currently uh, bringing the whole world to heal is an example of a respiratory virus. Often, in young, healthy individuals, these respiratory viruses only manage to infect the upper portions of the respiratory tract, i.e. the nasal cavities, the throat, maybe even the voice box. But they then don't manage to get into the lower portions, portions of the respiratory tract. However, again, in an elderly person whose immune system is not as strong, these respiratory viruses might get further down. They might get into the trachea or maybe even into the lower airways. So you can get viral lower respiratory tract infections. And then when the body's so distracted trying to fight that viral infection, then these bacteria that you're breathing in all the time anyway, they might go unnoticed by the immune system and then set up a secondary bacterial infection. So you can get secondary bacterial lower respiratory tract infections and secondary bacterial pneumonia from the primary viral lower respiratory tract infection. So bacterial infections in these lower portions of the respiratory tract are extremely dangerous because they're going to destroy the ability of the lungs to do their job, which is to uh, bring in oxygen into the blood and take away carbon dioxide. And if this infection isn't got on top of, either by the body's immune system or by antibiotics, then that individual is eventually going to die from respiratory failure. And indeed, prior to the days of antibiotics, these infections would have often been fatal. So doxycycline is highly effective against streptococcus pneumoniae, and therefore it is an excellent antibiotic to use to treat lower respiratory tract infections and pneumonia. However, 
It is only available as an oral medicine, so it's available usually as a capsule that is taken orally. There isn't an intravenous version of doxycycline available, and that usually means that doxycycline is only used in people who are quite clinically well despite having these infections. So if, for example, you had a patient who is extremely unwell from pneumonia, they might be delirious because of the infection. So when people have a really bad infection, the toxins going into the blood and the inflammatory cytokines going into the blood from the site of the infection cause the brain to not function properly. So people become very confused and it's called septic delirium. And in that state, the person might not actually be compliant with taking an oral tablet. And in that case, they're going to need to be given intravenous antibiotics instead. And doxycycline is simply not available as an intravenous medicine. So you'd have to give them something else, usually intravenous penicillin, maybe intravenous Benpen or intravenous Augmentin. However, in the case that an individual is reasonably well with one of these infections, doxycycline is an excellent treatment option and it might be the case that the individual is so well that they don't actually even need to come into hospital and they can be given this medicine to take in their own home to treat their infection. So the dose of doxycycline, there are two main doses. There's the normal dose and then there's what we call high dose doxycycline which we do use occasionally. So the normal dose is to take 100 milligrams once daily and doxycycline usually comes in a 100 milligram capsule. So this just means taking one capsule once a day, usually given first thing in the morning. Now, one thing to add to that is we usually do give a higher dose as the first dose. We give what's called a loading dose. So the first dose of the medicine that you take is twice the dose that you take for the remainder of the course. So you take 200 milligrams, two capsules on the first dose, first day and then every day after that you take 100 milligrams and of course might last for seven days it might last for 10 days it might last for 14 days depending on how long the clinician thinks it's going to take to beat the infection off there is then also what we call the high dose of doxycycline, which is to take 100 milligrams twice daily, i.e. one capsule twice daily. And we use this for more severe infections where we still think that the individual can just be treated with oral antibiotics. So normally that would be if an individual actually has uh, x-ray proven pneumonia. And the way that an x-ray proves pneumonia is when you take an x-ray of someone's chest, you can see areas of the lung that are actually infected. They show up as white splodges that we call consolidation on a chest x-ray. So if someone has chest x-ray proven pneumonia, but they are actually quite clinically well, maybe even suitable to go home, and we wanted to treat them with doxycycline, then we would usually potent or potentially give them high dose doxycycline. So we give them 100 milligrams twice daily, again, for maybe seven to 10 days. Now, despite being a perfectly valid treatment option for these types of infections where an individual is reasonably well and can just take an oral antibiotic. Doxycycline is not viewed usually as being the first line treatment in that sort of situation. The first line treatment would be uh, antibiotics such as the ones that I've listed here, so penicillin antibiotics, so amoxicillin or amoxicillin with clavulonic acid, coamoxiclav usually called augmentin. These are available as oral medicines and these would usually be the first line treatment that you'd consider for an individual with uh, one of these infections. Doxycycline instead is something that we would usually go to as an alternative if an individual is penicillin allergic. So if they can't take these medicines because they're allergic to penicillin and they've got one of these infections, they're clinically well, so they don't need to necessarily come into hospital, we're going to treat them with an oral medicine in the community, doxycycline would then be an excellent option.